I wanted to say that I was impressed, but like most people who watch this, I was not. If anything, I was utterly disappointed. And I'm about to tell you and I'm about to tell you why, so hang on people. This is going to be a wild ride and not in a good way. <laughs> Good morning, afternoon, evening everyone. Hi, my name is Mira and welcome back to my channel. If my voice sounds a little bit rusty, a little bit deep, it's because I still have the flu. Just a little, uh, just, well, a little bit. A smidge of a flu. I mean, I don't feel nauseous or have nose full of snot anymore, but there's still a little bit of that left. So bear with me, just listen to the entirety of this movie review and, and I apologize if it annoys you. Now before we begin, as always, please don't forget to click that bell button besides my subscribe button so you'll be notified if I upload something new. Now I know the X-Men series for a long time and yes, I have watched all of them just like other people might have done <laughs> because it has been such a long time and a long journey for X-Men movie series. And of course, I watched the old ones and new ones where James McAvoy plays Professor X where this, the movie series of this one will end with Dark Phoenix which is the movie that I'm about to review now. I have fangirled way too much on X-Men Apocalypse as you can probably see in my movie review. I will put the link somewhere here. But I have to say that the first two movies were far better. But the, this one, it's a definite disappointment for me and makes me a little bit angry. Just to refresh your memory and mine, I'll tell you a little bit about the synopsis. It was 1992, if I'm wrong about the year, please correct me, and the USA was planning to put men on the moon. So they sent a spaceship. However, things get wonky when something that looks like a solar flare messes, I think, with the spaceship's mechanics, causing the astronauts' life to be in jeopardy. Not seeing any other options, the president decided to ask the mutants for help. So the men fly with their own jet, including Jean Grey. One thing led to another and Jean Grey ended up absorbing the said solar flare into her body and everyone thought she should be dead. But somehow Jean Grey stayed alive and began exhibiting strange power, something that is too powerful for her to control. What would happen next? Will Jean be able to make peace and control the Dark Phoenix or will she be the reason of this world falling into well? Let's say an endless abyss. If you want to know the answer, of course, watch the movie to find out. Even though you probably already know the outcome. And if you haven't watched the movie and want to avoid spoilers, please stop here. It might not affect you much though. It's just bad. So bad. <laughs> As a mild reminder, as I have told you before, The Dark Phoenix will be the last movie of the latest X-Men movie series where it starts with X-Men First Class, then continued with X-Men Days of the Future Past, and then we get to X-Men Apocalypse before this movie showed up. The first one was real good, build up the story very nice, before Days of the Future Past which is became my most favorite X-Men movie. I mean they get to marry the two X-Men movie series, the old ones with a lot of Wolverine and the new one. And Days of the Future Past shows, well, Wolverine, whom I miss so much. Apocalypse made me kind of crazy, especially with the Quicksilver scene where he saves everyone. But overall, as I said, I still like the first two movies more. But this one, it's just... It's a mess. And that is putting it lightly. The beginning introduces us to the conflict real fast. And how the conflict came to be is just so simple. Makes me wonder whether the writers think this true or not. And then the strange change in Professor X's manner. Like, am I the only one who noticed this? Just because he wants to make the mutants seem good in front of normal people. I just can't believe that the Charles Savior that we all know and love from the very beginning can be so cold-hearted and obscured from his good old ways. It's just very unlike him. As if he was changed, just the storyline would make sense. Which brings me to the most important scene for me, 
where Raven died. If you remember the first two movies, you'll remember how close Charles and Raven was. He met her when she was little, they were like brothers and sister, even though one is blue and the other one is not. The relationship is so deep, it was shown in Days of the Future Past, when Charles lost Raven to Eric and he ended up using drugs that would make him walk but prevent him from using his real abilities just because he can't stand up knowing so much anymore since he already lost a lot. Remember at this point, Raven was still alive and Charles just lost her. He just, he, he doesn't know Raven anymore. And that wrecked him so much. But now she was dead in front of his eyes and he didn't even blink. He was just shocked, I think, not showing any pain or remorse. Instead, and if I remember this correctly, the scene just cuts to him accepting a phone from the president's office or was he the one who called him? I don't even know anymore. And then he got rejected and that's it. What? <sighs> when he talked to the beast or I forgot the real name of Beast, but he was played by Nicholas Holt. Charles didn't even look sad. He just, ah, uh, it's just, he just looks annoying. Urgh. That was a big red light for me. It makes me know that whatever they offer next in this movie, it won't be satisfying or even good. One thing though, one thing that I want to praise is their CGI, their effects, because they're just fantastic. The whole train scene where they fight and leading towards Jean Grey just disintegrating people with her power, that's badass and such a pleasure to see. Now, since I don't have anything to say anymore about the storyline or the annoying things that I've seen and just the utter sadness that I felt towards this movie, let's just move on to the characters. Now Jean Grey was supposed to be the main character for this movie. I mean, the, the movie itself is named after her alias. Yet it seemed that the one who truly lost and doesn't have an optimal character development is her. I can see her as the leading lady because the storyline just branched here and there. Plus she doesn't have a solid personality for me, even though we were explained about her past and how she dealt with that. This, this, the, it's a hollow shell. Then comes the villain, which I don't even know if she can be called a villain. <laughs> She's just there just to urge the story forward and again, she has no personality, no character worthy of mentioning. Bottom line, this whole thing is a train wreck. So should you watch this movie? I'd say don't bother. Don't waste your money like I do for such... Uh, I hate saying the word disappointment again, but that's just what it is. <laughs> if you're lucky, next month, this movie is already on Netflix. So just subscribe to Netflix. There you go. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me rant a lot about Dark Phoenix because I am so sad about this movie. <laughs> and if you like what you see, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Well, like of course. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this movie and about the review. <laughs> you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. They are in my description below. Thank you again so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!